Do you want to make popcorn and watch a movie? Yeah. Yeah. No. It'll just be me and your sisters. Where's popcorn bowl? I think it's up there. It's up there? Yeah, I can't look and see. Oh, he's gone! Where's the popcorn bowl? Where's the popcorn bowl? Uh, you want daddy to make you a new one? Yeah. You want it white, purple, and brown? Purple! Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Alright, daddy's got you. Well, it's movie night and we don't have a popcorn bowl, so what do I do? I make one. The wood that I'm going to be using for this project is a little mix of spalted hackberry, purple heart, and some walnut. The first step was to go to the table saw and cut them all to the same thickness. From there I headed over to the workbench and sorted out the pieces into somewhat of an interesting pattern. Once I got my boards where I wanted them, I measured the board, got my radius, and drew myself a circle. I made a template out of a scrap piece of cardboard. The reason for doing this is to maximize all the wood that I have there. I went ahead and marked all my lines and headed on over to the scroll saw. I used the same process for the second set of circles. The smaller pieces that you see left over, I'm going to be using those for a different project later down the line. When gluing up the wood, I added a top brace. Uh, this will keep your panel from bowing up or down. I added a thin piece of cardboard in between the glued panel and the support brace just so that it wouldn't glue to the panel itself. I wanted to make sure that the boards were flat and of equal thickness, so I achieved this using the planer. From here I took the boards and set it up onto the CNC. I pre-designed some cutouts in my VCAR program. I only show you one carving, but I do carve two of these panels. The circles, however, are offset. When I stacked them, I did take into account the cutout material, which is 1 8 of an inch. I did use my lathe to glue the rings together. That way I could turn the lathe as I went to make sure each ring was centered. I then used the tailstock to apply pressure. When turning the outside of this bowl, I wanted it to be a wavy look. So I achieved this by using a square carbide combined with a circular carbide. Those were the only two tools that I used for the outside of this bowl. When sanding it, I did sand the outside down to 1,000 grit. Since I needed to turn the bowl around, I did add a mortise to the bottom, and it fit nicely right over the chuck. For the inside of the bowl, all I used was a circular carbide. I also sanded down the inside of the bowl to 1000 grit. And finally, once the inside of the bowl was done, I went ahead and flipped it around and finished the bottom off. And I also sanded the bottom to 1000 grit. I'm using tongue oil as a finish for this bowl simply because it is food safe. However, tongue oil does take four coats total to get a nice shine, as well as quite a few days in between coats to allow for curing. So if you're in a rush, I wouldn't suggest tongue oil, but I love it. What is that? Wow, that is made up for you. This is bigger than me, but I'm right there. Poppin'. Popcorn popping? Yeah, popping. Okay. I fart. <laughs> you love it? Yeah, that, that's big. <laughs> that's big. It fits all the popcorns. It does a lot of them. Project was a success!